Hello and welcome to this video in which I'll use Workbench Mechanical to place a force in a response spectrum analysis instead of the usual base excitation. The Workbench Mechanical interface to ANSYS does not directly support putting in a force. It does allow for response spectrum accelerations, velocities, or displacements, but not direct input of forces. In this model, I'll use a named selection to indicate the place where I want the force. I've set it to one node, as you can see here, and there it is highlighted in the model. If I show you the mesh, you can see that the node is right here. So I've selected that one node in advance. A couple of warnings. If you select two or more nodes, the same force will be put in on each of them, and the force that you indicate in an APDL commands object will actually be magnified by the number of nodes that you've selected. The second thing, if you change this named selection indicating a node where a force goes in, you'll have to redo both the modal analysis and the response spectrum analysis. That's not obvious from the check marks in the model but experience suggests that you will have to redo both modal and response spectrum analysis if you change this named selection and use the named selection to indicate where you put in the force. First, a modal analysis. We've put a fixed support here and run a modal analysis. In this particular one, I only extracted three modes. The first one is what you'd expect. I can animate it. The second one is a twisting motion, like this. And the third one is a higher order out-of-plane deformation. Here is the linked response spectrum analysis. You can see right here that it is associated with the previous modal analysis. It inherits its boundary conditions from it. The usual thing would be to apply a response spectrum analysis. In this example, though, I have suppressed it, and instead I'll use APDL commands to put a force on a node. Now let's have a look at these commands. First, I've selected the node indicated by that named selection. I called it my node right here. You can see that it's my node up here in the named selections. So that one node is where the force will go in. On that node, I'm putting in a force in the Z direction, and then making it one unit in size. I do not need to use the SED command the way I would use it with an applied acceleration. I'm indicating that the type of load is going to be a force. This one right here implies a force. I'm scaling it by a factor of one. So I have one unit for the force, one unit in the SV type command, here is the set of frequencies that I've elected to use, and these values that I'm putting in are associated with the frequencies, and the high values, 10 and 10, are corresponding to the 70 and the 90 hertz. Now let's go check these modes. I have a mode here at 82 hertz. There it is, 82 hertz. And you can see that it is this twisting mode. And my force is over here towards one edge, so that can be expected to excite the twisting mode. And I've put it in, running from 70 to 90 hertz, so it is going to excite that 83 point something hertz twisting response. All the other entries are small numbers here and here. So I have that force of 10, and we're in the millimeter system of units, so it's going to be 10 newtons exciting that twisting mode. I run a solve. There's my deformation, and you can see from the colors that it's twisting, and there's hardly any movement on the main axis here. So it is twisting. In a response spectrum result, I can't animate this. Here's a look at the stresses. There's the stress at one node. I've used named selection and gone to my node. There's the stress value at that node. There's the displacement value at that node, 0.02 and that's in the Z direction. You can see right here, Z axis. And there's a directional deformation, Z only. While this 
total deformation plot implies the rocking movement with the peaks out here at the corners, Z only has a pretty constant value on the two edges. And the 0.02 that you see on that node here, you can tell that it's about 0.02 here in the yellow zone. So there's a quick look at taking a modal analysis linked to a response spectrum analysis and instead of putting in the usual base excitation, we're putting a force on one node instead using a set of commands that can be done like this. Once again, if you change the named selection for which node is affected, you need to redo both the modal and the response spectrum run. And I've chosen to put in a force of one unit. There's the direction. It's the global Z. And I have a scaling factor here on which kind of load it is. The one here means a force. There's the set of frequencies, and there's the set of amplitudes. So if you ever wanted to do response spectrum analysis in the workbench interface using a force instead of excitation, then there's a procedure. Now use this carefully. This has had just brief testing, and you'll need to verify that it's giving a valid result. Thanks for joining me.